this disconnect between the public's view of copyright and fair use and on what should and should not be prosecuted versus the copyright maximus view of the law is our generation's prohibition. Copyright exists to promote the useful arts according to the Constitution, but is it still doing that? And should the government protect so-called intellectual property in the same way that it protects other forms of property? We asked a professor, a movie studio representative, and a tech company founder and CEO these questions. But before we share their answers, I want to assure the MPAA officials watching this video that I did my best not to use any copyrighted material without the owner's permission. But it was pretty difficult. Like, it'd be nice to use a clip from Steamboat Willie, Disney's first animated feature when introducing this clip of Chapman University professor Tom Bell, who invented a non-copyrighted graph called the Mickey Mouse Curve, which we'll talk about later. There are a lot of people who equate copyright to property, and although there are similarities, I think that's a mistake. As soon as we start using the word property for copyright, we end up taking less seriously our property rights in things like cars and houses. But some people think copyright is the same as property. The Motion Picture Association of America put out that famous ad, which we can't play here because it might be a copyright violation, that says, you wouldn't steal a car. Downloading pirated films is stealing. I think there is a moral equivalence be between, you know, actual shoplifting of a physical object as opposed to, uh, you know, downloading, say, a movie, uh, you know, without paying for it. When you steal a candy bar or a car, you've left somebody without something to eat or something to drive. If you make an unauthorized copy of a movie, it may be illegal, maybe it should be illegal, but it's not theft, not in the same way that stealing property is theft. Because why? Because the studio still has their movie. They don't make as much money as they want, but they still have not suffered theft. We can get into semantic debates about whether or not uh, one qualifies as quote unquote stealing uh, or not, but the fact is that it's wrong and it hurts uh, creators and ultimately it, it, it hurts the public because if this kind of piracy is allowed to run rampant, uh, it'll deprive the public of the next great film. The heated battle over the Stop Online Piracy Act, SOPA, represents the most recent clash over the proper scope of copyright. After a massive online revolt led by tech giants like Wikipedia and Google, Congress took notice and killed SOPA and its Senate counterpart, PIPA. I think that we had a very close call. Um, I think SOPA and PIPA almost um, went by undete undetected, uh, and that would have been pretty damaging to the internet. Ben Ha is the founder and CEO of Cheeseburger, home of lolcats, fail blog, and other internet favorites that were the subject of what became the anti-SOPA movement's protest song. Every login was refused the day the lolcats died. The more you read the bill, the more alarming it became. Every single provision was like, I can't believe they're writing this. Our web means more than lawyers, lobbies, and lies. So speak up before the internet dies. But Scheffner says that worries about SOPA's reach were overblown. These were narrowly targeted bills at a specific kind of foreign, what we call rogue websites. These are basically so, websites that do nothing else except distribute uh, infringing material. But sites like Google, Wikipedia, and Cheeseburger protested the bill because they feared unintended consequences that might result from the broad language in the bill's text. We actually have an Austrian domain name. And in fact, according to the bill, that would be considered a foreign, foreign site. And if that site posted material that was potentially infringing a copyright, in their view, uh, they would not require a, a, a verdict from a court of law in order to go pursue that domain. So we, as a U.S. company, would fall under the jurisdiction of this bill. This is one in a long, long string of what we call copyright maximism. And in fact, when you look at copyrights in a maximist view, almost everything we do is copyright infringement. How did copyright law become so far-reaching? Tom Bell's Mickey Mouse Curve helps explain. In 1928, Mickey Mouse, whom we cannot portray here in any fashion, so just try to imagine how these three concentric black circles might form his visage, burst onto the scene with a movie called Steamboat Willie. 
which we also can't play here. In the following years, Mickey Mouse became a star and, in fact, the face of a giant, powerful, beloved corporation, which presented a problem when the then 56-year copyright term on Steamboat Willie was approaching expiration. But Congress signed a 1976 Copyright Extension Act, which kicked in all too coincidentally just in time to save Mickey from the creative clutches of his would-be defilers for another 19 years. Mickey's time was running out once again when the Sonny Bono Act saved the day by extending the copyright life of works of corporate authorship to a remarkable 120 years. Mickey remains in safely white-gloved hands until at least 2023. The world's first copyright law protected works for only 14 years. If the copyright was 14 years, you would see Star Wars in the public domain. Imagine the amount of creativity, imagine the amount of new business and, and new content and new jobs that would create. But Scheffner says that it's the strong enforcement of copyright that is spurring creativity and jobs. The damage that piracy does is, is very deep, and if left unchecked, it'll really be, have an impact on the number and quality of movies and television shows produced. Is there a market failure in the production and dissemination of expressive works? If we see a real deficiency in that area, boy, we better take action. But I don't think we see that. I don't think there's any risk that we're going to run out of songs or books or movies or software anytime soon. While the MPAA and other entertainment industry trade groups have bemoaned the effects of rampant internet piracy on creative output, the numbers tell a different story. Research shows more music and books produced than ever before between 2005 to 2010, production of feature films growing by a factor of more than four in 14 years, and the number of video game companies exploding by a factor of 18 in the span of three years. Ha huh, says the MPAA's focus on piracy is nothing more than a distraction. The actual thing that is killing the MPAA and the RRA and the other people is the lack of alternatives for good people like you and me to get their content in the way that they need. I have to shut myself out of my house, out of my PJs, waste gas, and then sit in the movie theater with a bunch of people who I don't know, who are chewing and talking on their phones. Why can't you let me see first-run movies at home? I'll pay you for it. Of course the studios and other copyright owners are adapting. I mean, there's all sorts of new distribution models that they're trying out every day. The thing that we try to make sure to do is to, is to ensure that 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 the marketplace around the internet is governed by the rule of law and property rights. The MPAA's model for rule of law of the internet, as their chairman Chris Dodd said, when the Chinese told Google that they had to block sites or they couldn't do business in their country, they managed to figure out how to block sites. In certain circumstances, we absolutely believe that site blocking is an appropriate remedy. This has gone on in many countries all over the world, not just in China, but in, for example, in the EU. If site blocking broke the internet, the, the internet would have been broken a long time ago. If you give the United States government basically a kill switch to the internet, premised on protecting copyrights, what guarantee do you have that they're gonna limit it to only the worst infractions of copyrights? I'm afraid I don't trust our government that far. As the MPAA and other trade organizations continue to push for more government action to curb copyright infringement, Ben Ha believes that the fight is only just beginning. This disconnect between the public's view of copyright and fair use and on what should and should not be prosecuted versus the copyright maximist view of the law is our generation's prohibition. The law no longer reflects what the society believes to be true. And I think that if they continue to go down that route, they're gonna see even bigger backlash. And that's not you know, something that I came up with, that's what American history tells us. Why, why are laws a thing you can buy? They got paid off, should be laid off, free election denied. Our web means more than lawyers, lobbies, and lies. So speak up before the internet.